Hey guys, my name is Simon from the Loki team, joined here today with Key. Hey guys. I was just here to talk to you today about a uh, slight design change that we've been discussing at the Loki team over the last couple months. Um, in my opinion, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, none of the security models change, it's just a slight uh, way that we're choosing to implement Session now. Um, so as many of you know, Session relies on onion routing to provide a lot of the metadata protection. So the feature that we're proposing today um, and implemented, have implemented already um, to an extent, is a way of doing that without requiring LokiNet. So LokiNet is a general routing infrastructure. Um, so it can route any arbitrary packets of data, which is super powerful, mm -hmm. um, but it's not actually necessary for what Session needs to do. Um, and it's very complicated to integrate into a simple Android application or iOS application. Mm -hmm. So there's a number of complexities that come with uh, doing it through LokiNet or Tor or in any of these other general routing networks. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're proposing today is a way to continue to do onion routing for session uh, and provide that metadata security that relies on much, much simpler activities to process very specific things, which is requests only within the Loki storage server network itself. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a very limited set of requests and there's a limited set of nodes, which is all of the service node network. Mm -hmm. All of the unrouting still occurs within the, uh, the same network. You get the same uh, metadata protection as you would from LokiNet, um, the same civil attack resistance and everything else. It's just a slightly easier way to do it on our end so we can get session delivered faster. Mm -hmm. um, in the long term, there are some problems with it, but we've got some questions that we've sort of written down that we had to think about as we were designing it, and we'll answer them today. And hopefully, we'll be able to share with you, you know, why why we made this decision and what it actually means for the project. So the main difference is in the complexity of things. Uh, LokiNet builds out this whole idea of a distributed hash table. Um, it needs to know how to contact nodes for exit it for the purposes of exiting the network. With onion requests, things are much more simple because we know that the only things that we would need to communicate for purposes of session are other storage servers and the Loki file server and the Loki public chat server. So that's only three possible combinations. Whereas LokiNet has, you know, potentially millions and millions of combinations of uh, things it could be talking to. Uh, and also, LokiNet deals with things at the network layer, whereas uh, for onion requests, we're dealing with things uh, at the transport layer. So we get to, uh, instead of having to build out all of the applications that are using the VPN API, essentially in Android and iOS, which is a little more tricky, uh, we can just integrate this directly into the session messaging application so that when you download it uh, and you access a storage server or a file server, you're automatically using the onion request system. There's nothing super special that we need to build out for that. So essentially, um, the, it, it's exactly the same idea. You're still choosing a number of random hops in the network and routing your uh, data through each of those hops where each hop only knows about the previous and next node. It's onion routing through and through. It's still got all of the same privacy requir uh, requirements that we wanted in session. It's just reduced complexity um, because LokiNet is having issues right now with some of the DHT stuff um, and also it's new beta software so um, it, it takes time to get everything working as, as we want it to. So this is essentially a medium ground that we can step on right now to get Session out earlier while still maintaining all of the privacy uh, requirements that we have. There's no security compromise to using uh, un onion request over LokiNet. Uh, and that's basically because it's the same thing, really. Uh, it's still onion routing. Uh, and that's the key concept that uh, LokiNet relies on is that you should pick a number of nodes from the network and then route through them progressively. Uh, session uh, onion request is doing the exact same thing. It's grabbing a list of service nodes uh, from uh, the list of service nodes you download when you start the application, you're choosing some of those service nodes randomly, and then you're encrypting uh, your information for each of those hops, and they progressively unwrap it and send it to its destination, which is probably going to be a storage server or a local file server if you're attaching it, uh, if you're downloading an attachment or, or a public an open chat group server. Yeah. Yeah, server. So it's the same concept, just reduced complexity. So the security is uh, essentially the same on our side. 
There are some disadvantages to not using LokiNet. Mm -hmm. um, they include uh, the fact that because we now rely on TCP requests as the primary method of uh, conducting these uh, onion requests, doing voice chats within session using this new system is going to be basically impossible. So we'll have to wait until uh, we have a way of using LokiNet through session before that's possible. Another disadvantage is that uh, there is an anonymity set problem that will have now arisen as there are two separate types of packets being sent across the Loki network which reduces the anonymity set of both Loki net and of the Unreal request system. So that's also a slight disadvantage. Although I don't think that's going to be an advantage, uh, disadvantage or advantage in the in the first couple of months because Loki net really hasn't picked up with that much traffic no. just yet. No. Um, but further down the road when LokiNet's really um, picking up and there's a lot of sites on LokiNet and people are using it to download uh, and upload data, having those two anonymity sets mixed would be better than having the uh, session or the unknown request and uh, the LokiNet traffic as well. So, I mean, this, this solution is kind of medium term we're considering until um, we really get an understanding of how to do LokiNet on mobile really well um, because that's still kind of a little bit of a struggle for us because we don't just have to, uh, it's not just about building it on our side, it's also about Apple accepting the stuff that we're doing on their side or Google Play accepting what we're doing uh, to be on the App Store, for example. So um, yeah, it's a complex kind of balancing of uh, different requirements from what the App Store wants and what we want and yeah. Yeah, so initially session won't have LokiNet or onion requests. It'll have what are called proxy requests. So proxy requests are essentially onion requests except there's just one hop instead of three hops. Uh, and what will essentially happen is when you contact the Loki file server or you contact any other service node to request your own messages off that service node, you'll encrypt for the service node that you're talking to or the file server that you're talking to, and then you'll have an intermediary hop where you pass your message to that intermediary hop. It can't read any of the data that's in there and it just forwards it to the uh, ultimate uh, destination. And then the same when the response is coming to you. And this ensures that your IP address, the IP address of your phone or your desktop client, is never exposed to any of the storage servers well, on the network. Well, not exposed directly, but because it's only one hop, it mm. is possible that uh, the path can be correlated quite easily and you can lose privacy that way. So it's an imperfect short-term solution so mm. that we can get this app out this week. And I'm saying that from the perspective of publishing within seven days of this video coming out session, we hope with App Store approval will be out and available using this proxy request system. Mm. And within the following weeks, um, we're trying to work out the date that we can schedule the hard fork to enable onion requests because that requires a mandatory upgrade of all service nodes. Uh, so the storage servers are capable of doing uh, onion routing those requests using SAMQ. But once that's in, um, this proxy request thing is only a short term measure. After that, once we're onto onion requests within a few weeks, that problem goes away. We're back to full onion routing mm. um, security model as is the way that it's been described since the get go. So we're, what we're trying to do at the moment is we're just trying to take practical measures to get the best we can the soonest we can um, and iterating on that as we go. So mm -hmm. that's what proxy requests are. By extension, that's what onion requests are because what all onion requests are is they're taking the proxy request system and they're adding two, two hops behind it. Hmm. So because we already built that system, it means onion requests are actually a really quick thing for us to do. Um, and then LokiNet is obviously the, the long-term goal. So we have you know a complex changing set of problems that we're aware of, a complex changing set of requirements. And the big requirement for us is to get this thing out as soon as possible so we can mm. really start working on the user base, making UX improvements, ironing out the issues, taking in user feedback, and making sure that by the end of this year we have a substantial user base for session because if at the end of the day we build this thing and no one comes, what was the point? So that, that's, what, that's, that's why we're making this compromise, making this middle ground, but still trying to preserve the privacy properties that it needs to have in order to be what we want it to be. Hmm. So the future of LokiNet doesn't change. 
uh, we're still we've still got the same amount of developers working on LokiNet. We're not abandoning LokiNet or anything by making these changes, and we still hope that LokiNet um, is going to have a role in session. It's just going to be down the track. Um, in terms of LokiNet, what they're focusing on now, they're focusing on fixing some of the DHT issues. If you jump on uh, GitHub, there's two issues filed by uh, Jason that actually go through some of the issues that we're having, and you can read in more technical detail about how we're trying to solve those as well. Um, but fundamentally, the LokiNet roadmap is still intact, and we're still developing LokiNet. Uh, and that's the reason is because Onion requests are so limited in their scope. They can really only, or they're tailored for the purposes of session, and to only contact these kind of three services. So we want something more general in the future uh, to be able to do some of this stuff like voice calling. Um, but yeah. So thanks guys for joining us. Hope you found that informative and useful. We'd love to hear your comments as always. Um, really excited about session. It's coming out super, super soon. Uh, we've been working really hard at it and trying to make these, trying to do the best we can with what we've got and, and really try and push the standard forward. So uh, do try session when it comes out. It will be coming out very shortly after the release of this video. Um, so we'll probably speak to you very soon once that occurs. So see you then. Thanks guys.